Don't bring the truth. I am going to take you on a trip today. And you may have traveled a lot or not a lot. But you will never go this fast again in your life. Because I am going to take you from one province in Canada and one territory through all of them in 45 minutes. And when it's over, if I have fallen on the floor, will you please come and pick me up? Because it's going to be a very, very, very fast trip. Canada is a very interesting country. And there are many aspects to us, to it, that sometimes we forget about. Right now, I am listing all of the provinces in Canada. Actually, there are 13 parts. There are 10 provinces. And there are three territories. There are the territories. We're going to start with one of the territories, and we're going to go this way. We're going to start here. We're going to come down here. We're going to go here, jump over here, come back here, and end up there. Because that is where you will learn about the Canadian flag, and that's at the end of the program. And sometimes people fall asleep in the middle, but you'll be awake at the end, so you'll get that important part. Here we go. The border between the United States and Canada is the longest border between two countries in the world. It's a peaceful border. We move back and forth across it easily with passports, but we move across it easily. But it's a continuous border. It's the second largest country. I can't imagine what would be bigger than Canada. Can you? How about Russia? Yes, of course. That's the only bigger country. It has the longest coastline in the world. Look at it. Look at that. The longest in the world. And it has more lakes. You can't see them all on here because some of them are very small. Others are much larger. Canada, you find interesting, has more educated college graduates than any other country in the world. And it has the most gold medals. It has won the most gold medals of every country in the world. Now notice, I have the silver medals and I have the bronze medals there. It's not total medals. It's the gold medals that they won the most. And that's what more Canadians eat than any other food, macaroni and cheese. Now, I gave the cook here the recipe for macaroni and cheese yesterday. I have my fingers crossed that that's what you'll have for lunch today. And if you don't like it, you're not Canadian, so it's okay. But you might like it very much, and if you do, you'll be glad you'll have lunch here today and you can always get the recipe from me and go home and have your mother make some too. This is the largest territory, not province. Remember, we have three territories. This is the largest one and it's in red so you can see it. There are fewer people here than any other part of the world. And in this territory is Canada's largest island. It's called Baffin Island, and you can see where I've indicated that on the map. If you go to a restaurant there, there aren't a lot of towns there, and there aren't a lot of places to eat. But if you go there, on the menu, you might find icy chunks of whale blubber to eat. You might find raw seal, you might find fish, you might find caribou. They eat what is common to their area. They eat what the polar bears eat. The polar bears like raw seal. You like raw seal? You like what the polar bears like. This particular territory has the northernmost settlement in the world. There it is. Almost at the very top of the world, the Arctic Circle. 
And there is a picture of what it looks like. Usually about 62 people live there at a time, but they live there year round. Interesting fact, no trains and no roads go directly from other parts of Canada to none of it. How do you get there? Fly. Or walk. Or dog sled. But not by train and very seldom by car. Now notice what I've shown you here. This is each one of the, each one of the territories and provinces has a flag. And this is the flag of none of it. And you'll notice the Anutsuk there. And now, just so you understand how big these stone monuments are, look at the people here. These are the road signs. This is how you know if you're lost or not. And this is how you know how to get unlost, to go to the next place where there would be people. And this is also their way of showing other strangers to the area that somebody real, some human being, has been there. They have built these huge markers, and those markers point the direction you should go. If you, do want, if you want to find more people, those are the directions you go. They're very large, they're very easy to see. This is how many people live in none of it, and notice how many of them are Native Indians, the Inuit Indians. There aren't any trees there. It's above the tree line. Look at the picture. It's mountains, it's snow, it's grass, but it's not trees. Now we'll go to the next one. We're going pretty fast here, and it's going to speed up. Here is the Northwest Territory. The arrow that I pointed to is the deepest lake in North America. And it's one of the deepest lakes in the world. This particular territory <clears throat> is famous for its mining and its uranium. But it, the weather is so very bad up there that it's for only 10 weeks a year they can move what they have dug out of the ground. And notice how they do circular mining. They dig a small hole, and a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one, and keep expanding these to get more out of the ground. If you want to see the northern, <clears throat> northern lights, you want to go there. Because out of the whole year, 250 days a year, you can see the northern lights in the Northwest Territories. <clears throat> I like the word tundra because that's a Russian word. But that is also part of the area that you find in the Northwest Territories. They do have, unlike um, none of it, they have forests, they have areas that are greener and have longer growing seasons so trees can, can survive. I like this sign. I come from the United States and from Pennsylvania, and we have signs along the side of our roads to warn us that deer may go across the road. Up here, they have bison signs. And recently in the United States, in Yellowstone National Park, the bison went crazy, and they were running, and people were driving their cars. This was last week in, in Yellowstone, and they had to stop the car because the bison just is so powerful and big. We just keep running and running, and it did go around the cars, but people were sitting in the cars watching the bison go by. So it's a good sign to have along the road because if the bison hits your car, the bison might survive, but your car won't. Your car is probably going to need to be helped off the road. The Northwest Territory doesn't have a lot of towns. And at Great Bear Lake, the deepest lake, they have an airport. It looks like that. That is the airport, period. That does not take a very big plane. But big planes don't fly there very often. 
So you see, this is a fairly isolated part of Canada. Now we're going to go to the next territory, which is the Yukon Territory. The Yukon Territory is beside none of it, which has the northernmost city. It's beside none of it, which has the largest island, Baffin Island. It's beside the Northwest Territory, which has the deepest lake. And what does the Yukon have to offer us? Well, let's see. Very few people. We'll start with that. It's about the size of Spain. Have you been to Spain? That's the size of the Yukon. It's the coldest part of North America. The temperatures there get very, very cold very, very often and stay cold. But it has the second highest mountain in North America. And it's right there, near Alaska. And this is interesting. That's the largest weather vane in the world. The largest one. And what is it? It's an airplane. Now, an airplane is heavy. This airplane is not heavy anymore. They took everything out inside. No seats, no engine, no nothing inside, just the outside. Put it on this big stand. It's in Whitehorse, which is the capital. And it points the direction the wind's blowing. So they own and are very proud to have the largest weather vane in the world. I want to show you the capital. Moscow is your capital. That's their capital. That's the main street of their capital. That's it, folks. That's all the bigger it gets. Just spreads out, kind of flat. Has a river that goes through it. Moscow River goes through Moscow. They have the Yukon River, which goes through uh, Yellow Horse, or goes through White Horse. Of all the people who live in the Yukon, 75% of them live in that town. There aren't very many towns there. And they only have one month a year that it doesn't snow. So you can go any month that you want to see snow except July. It's beautiful. But it's very, very, very unpopulated. Very few people. Now let's go to the provinces. And the first one you come to is Colombia. Been to Germany, you've been to France, you've been to Holland, you put them all together, and you have the size of this province. Now look at this. I just showed you Whitehorse, the capital of the Yukon. There it is on the map. There is Vancouver down below. It's across the water from Victoria, their capital. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Canada is very, very different. Different parts will teach you different things about Canada. But one looks like an old western town with low buildings, and the other one looks like Moscow, New York City, some big city, Chicago. One of the things that keeps this, keeps this province from being so populated is we have a lot of mountains down here in the United States, that come up the Rockies, for example, and they come up through here. And so Fort Nelson, which is here, is, it has people there. But there, there are parts of this that nobody, no human being has ever seen. It's so dense and so forested. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the largest hockey stick in the world. There it is. It was a gift from another country. And when it was given to, the, to British Columbia, uh, all the cities wanted it. And one small town near the, co the, the border between Northwest Territory and the Yukon won, and so they have the hockey stick outside one of their buildings. What else is here? If you've never seen the oldest tree in the world, you have now. It's 2,000 years old. 
It's not a redwood. It's not huge. It's old. It's very old. And what's this man doing on the ladder? He's a music teacher in a school in British Columbia, and he has the longest beard in the world. Now, I just thought maybe some of this stuff ought to be interesting for you to know about. I mean, how many people are going to come here and show you a man who has the longest beard in the world, and it's longer, than, it's taller than he is. He's on a ladder. He's standing way up there. Look, he's never had a cut. He said it's a gift from God, and so he's keeping it. I can't imagine him running up and down the stairs in the school with a beard like that. He'd have to have it wrapped around his head to keep it out of the way. Okay, here we come to, Brit to Alberta. Very different, very different from British Columbia. I found this to be curious. No rats. No rats at all in Alberta. In fact, two years ago, they found a nest of wild rats someplace, and they went out and killed all of them. If you would like a rat as a little pet to have in your house, they'll come and take your rat away. You're not allowed to have a rat, maybe a mouse for a pet, but not a rat. No rats at all in British Columbia. They just don't like them. So if the rat crosses the border, into Alberta from one of the other, or yeah, Alberta from one of the other places, the rat is done because they kill the rat. There was a time when there were a lot of Ukrainians who left Ukraine and went to live in Canada, and many of them settled in Alberta. And so this man, who was Ukrainian, built this huge Ukrainian Easter egg. The only larger one is in Kiev. So there is this huge Easter egg. What is it doing in Alberta? It reminds the people who are of Ukrainian ascent that that is from their country. If you would be in a spaceship and flying around the Earth, you could look down sometimes and see the Great Wall of China, or you could see the largest Bear, or a beaver dam in the world. Since 1975, these beavers have been building this dam. It is now so big, you can see it from outer space. A very curious thing. Alberta's a beautiful, beautiful province. Glaciers, mountains, prairies, deserts, lots of different things. It has badlands, and just so you know what a badland looks like, there it is. At one time, the earth was so warm that this part of the world was, was also very warm, and dinosaurs lived here. The largest burial ground dinosaurs is located in that area. They finally had to stop people from coming and taking parts away just as a gift or a souvenir, and so they have petitioned it off. As a tourist, you can go to certain places and see what they're doing, but you can't, you can't uh, dig anything up anymore because they have found the largest collection of dinosaur bones to be there. This is that Catchamon, certainly an Indian name. And if you notice this, it's very proud of the fact that it has the most beautiful skies. In the morning, and at night, it has beautiful sunrises and beautiful sunsets, and you can see a lot of flat land there. Where none of it doesn't have any roads or any, air, or any train, or train tracks, this province has enough to go around the earth four times. Many, many, many roads cross this area to get from the eastern part of Canada to the western part. And if you want to go swimming, and you don't know how to swim, you want to go there, to Little Lake Manitoba. It's so small that you can't see it on the map. I just show you where it is. But this lake has so much salt in it, you can't sink. Nothing sinks. Fish can't live, because they can't breathe all that salt and survive. But you can't sink 
So you can survive. So you can go swimming there. You come out covered with salt, but nevertheless, you won't sink into the water. Okay, now what have I done? I've showed you a huge moose. I've showed you some purple sand, and I've showed you mustard. And you say in Saskatchewan? Uh-huh, yes. Macamoose was, until just recently, the largest moose sculpture in the world. The Norwegians found out about it, and they didn't like the fact that the largest moose sculpture was in Saskatchewan. They thought it should be in Norway. So they made a brother to this one and made it just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit bigger. So they have the biggest one. But Mac was the first really big moose. If you like mustard, there's a very strong chance that your mustard was grown in Saskatchewan. It grows more mustard than any other part of the world. And purple sand, if you haven't seen it, guess what? You want to go to Saskatchewan and to the very far northwestern corner of Saskatchewan, and there is purple sand. Why? Only God knows, but it's there. And it's big. Look at the dunes. Manitoba. Now, Manitoba is interesting to me because it is the polar bear capital of the world, and that's someplace I was in Canada a couple of months ago to take some of the pictures that you're looking at, but I wasn't in Manitoba. I want to go there sometime because I want to see all these polar bears, and I know exactly where I'm going to go. It's a town called Churchill. It's on the northern side of Manitoba, and that's where you can see the most polar bears. When I was studying uh, all of this information, I realized that polar bears have, it looks like white fur. It's not. It's clear. It's not, it really isn't a color at all. But it protects them in the snow because you can't see them. But their skin is black. And why would that be? Because they like seal. I showed you the one eating the raw seal. They like seals. What do seals do? Seals scurry across the ice, go into a hole, and go down underneath and pop up in the water. They have these little paths that they follow, these caves. The polar bear know that. So when the polar bear goes into the water, his fur just becomes no color at all. He becomes very, very dark. The seals can't see him, and they can get lunch. And something else, a polar bear is not like a grizzly bear has a big face. A polar bear has a narrow face. And a, po a grizzly bear has great big shoulders. A polar bear doesn't. A polar bear's power is in its back legs, not, not in the front. Because a polar bear can then go into the seal's cave under the water, grab the seal, come out, come up, back up onto the land. This, a polar bear can stay underwater for three minutes without breathing so that they can get lunch. It's interesting how nature takes care of itself. If you like swinging bridges, and I'm not a big fan because I always feel like I'm going to fall off, there is the longest swinging bridge in the world, and it's also in Manitoba. If you don't know what a swerpy is, a swerpy is ludi sulk. So you get ice, you get juice, and you have a swerpy. You are looking at the largest sculpture of a Slurpee in the world. It's outside of a restaurant. Nobody knows for sure why people in Manitoba love Slurpees. Nobody in the world eats as many. When women are in the hospital who have a child and they are recovering, what they do to help them recover is they bring them a Slurpee. If you go to visit somebody in Manitoba, they don't bring you flowers. They bring you a Slurpee. Everybody eats Slurpees, drinks Slurpees there. It's their big national drink. And look at him. If you heard of Winnie the Pooh, he got his name from Winnipeg, because that's where he came from. And then he was taken to England, 
And this man, this serviceman, British man, said, what are we going to call this? He goes, Winnipeg. Winnie. So we put his name there. And here, rumor mentioned the buffalo. Well, guess what? In Manitoba, they have this huge cliff. And at one point in time, the Indians survived by eating bison and wearing bison fur and using the bison bones to make things to scoop with, for jewelry, for whatever they needed. So here you have a cliff. And what they would do, bison, I told you, a bison can kill your car. A bison can kill your car and run away. And your car is sitting there in a heap, and the bison is fine. They're big and strong. But they don't survive very well when they're pushed off of a cliff. So the Indians would chase them, They'd run off the edge of the cliff, they would die, the Indians would go down the ground, pick up the bison, and then they would have clothing, tents, jewelry, bones, meat. That's how they survived. We have already gotten now clear across Canada, and we're starting on the other side. I put two maps here. So you can see Newfoundland Labrador. It is not, folks. It is not Newfoundland and Labrador. It's Newfoundland Labrador. It's one province. They are not two. They're two parts, but only one thing. And then I have a map that shows you where they are on the side of the earth. This province sticks out the furthest into the Atlantic Ocean. And there is the mainland, which is Labrador. And there is Newfoundland, which is actually an island. And they are connected by a ferry. It takes 90 minutes to go by ferry from here over to here. And they run the ferry a couple of times a day for cars and for people. But they are one province. Because it's so far out in the ocean, naturally, they're going to fly a plane from one side of the ocean to the other. They'll start in Newfoundland, because that's the furthest point out into the ocean that they can go in North America. Look at this town. Look at the colors. Isn't it gorgeous? Well, guess what? It has to be that way. And here's the reason. This part of Canada gets more fog than any other part, and when ships were coming in, they couldn't tell where the land was because the fog would keep coming. And so what they had to do is they built all these houses, different bright colors, and that way the houses would show up through the fog and they could see where they were going. It is our oldest town in North America, but John Cabot was not the first one. The Vikings were there 500 years earlier. This is a curious thing. Newfoundland is an island. Labrador's on the mainland. But Newfoundland is an easier place for people to live. So 94% of all of the people who live in that province live in Newfoundland. And if you lived in Newfoundland and you were on Twilling Gate Island in the spring, you might open your windows in your bedroom in the morning to look out and see a huge iceberg. Because there's a channel there and many, many, many of the icebergs who break off from the north float down by there. Look at the size of the house and the size of the iceberg. You want to see polar bear, you go to Manitoba. You want to see icebergs, go to Newfoundland. Marconi, when he was trying to make a signal that would go clear across the ocean, he chose this particular site for it because it was up very high. I have another picture here. This shows you actually what he would have seen from on the land looking. Look at the ocean in the background. Look how far out that is. That was his highest point. Furthest point out in the Atlantic Ocean, 
highest point to get a signal over to England. Now what do we have? Oh. Why did it... Oh, there we go. Here we go. Okay, got it. All right, let's take a look at this place that only has 6% of the population of this province in it. All those little red dots show you tiny towns. Look at the size of this town. This is Bread Bay, which is where they used to do a lot of the whaling. But these little red dots that you see all over here, they're just very small towns. Does not have big towns. Here's another one. That's the furthest point north. Nain is the furthest point north that has a decent settlement in Labrador. And small planes can fly in and out. Not roads. Not roads, small planes. I found this interesting and intentionally put it on here. Moscow does not have a sub-Arctic temperature, thank goodness. I don't think I'd be here if it did. Not for very long, anyway. But this town name is on the same level as Moscow, but a very different type of climate. Now we go to another province, and this one is called New Brunswick. New Brunswick is not, it's halfway, here's the equator, South Pole, Equator, North Pole, New Brunswick, right in the middle. It's mostly forested. These provinces are also very different. And if you like whales, now I told you where to go to see icebergs. I told you where to go to see polar bear. Now I'm helping you again. I'm going to tell you where to go to see the whales. And here you are. You want to go here because this is, there's a beluga whale and there's a killer whale. All different kinds of whales. More different kinds of whales there than any place else in the world. Okay, here we go again. No man with a long beard this time. We just have other things. We have french fries, we've got a bridge, we've got this ax, and we have this landscape. What's going on? New Brunswick has so many trees that this is to remind them that that's kind of the symbol of their province. Foresting, harvesting trees. That is the largest ax in the world. That's the longest covered bridge. When they first built this bridge, women were afraid to cross it by themselves. They thought something could happen to them because they're on the bridge for so long when they get from one side to the other. It never seemed to be a problem, but nevertheless, that was their concern. And what's here? The Bay of Fundy borders against New Brunswick. It has the highest tides in the world. You know what a meter looks like? Think of that every hour, they're going up. Every hour goes up a meter. It's a very, 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 and you can see here, I intentionally used this picture so you could see how high up the water ordinarily goes. Look at the size of this person down here, and this is the water line at high tide. They're actually walking on the floor of the ocean when they're standing right there. All right, what's going on with the French fries? One third of all of the French fries in the world are made at a factory in New Brunswick. It's not the only place in Canada that take manufactures French fries, and there are some other parts of the world that do too. But this is a very important thing here. And I think one of the reasons why I would go there is because once I go through the museum, I get a free plate of French fries to eat at the end. That makes any trip worthwhile for me. So I think that's a good thing. Now we go to Prince Edward Island, which is small. It's their smallest province. It was named for the Queen's father. And it has the longest bridge that's built over ice. They, didn't, they weren't sure. They wanted to build a bridge that would connect what you just saw. They wanted to connect New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. To go across that, which I've done, 
To go across that, in American money, it costs $40 to drive one way across that bridge. It's very, very expensive. You do not want to just do that for fun. If you're going there, you have to have a, you want to have a reason, because that's expensive. $40 one way, $40 the other way. That's a lot of rubles. If you transfer it into rubles. Now, this bridge will connect, whether it's icy or it's not. This bridge is solid, and it connects those two areas. So this particular island, which grows a lot of potatoes, can get the potatoes over to New Brunswick, where they can make them into french fries for you. Here are three more pictures. Their soil is red. And their soil is very rich. So they can do a lot of farming there. If you have ever read or heard of Anne of Green Gables, she was that little orphan girl that came to live on Prince Edward Island. And it was on the northern side of the island where the house is still there that they say that she lived in. Now, this is one of their big crops. Look how many acres. How much land is painted with, is planted with potatoes every year that then go across that eight mile bridge to New Brunswick and get turned into your french fries. Here's Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is just south. You can see here, we've done New Brunswick, we've done Prince Edward Island. Now we're Nova Scotia, which is along here. Nova Scotia has 160 lighthouses. And that lighthouse that you're looking at right now is at Peggy's Cove. And Peggy's Cove is the picture that you see at the top. It's a very small fishing village. It's very pretty. Lots of artists go there. I've gone there. I painted the, the lighthouse. Um, a lot of people do that. Everybody, they have, up at the lighthouse, they have a small mailbox where you can send a, a letter to somebody that will be stamped coming from Peggy's Cove. Nova Scotia has, see where the arrow pointing? That's a road. It has the longest, most scenic road in the world. I've done it. The second most important scenic road is around Cape Town in South Africa. And I've done that one too. They're both beautiful. This is a little longer, and it goes clear around the island. I included this picture so you don't think that Peggy's Cove is just the only place where people in Nova Scotia live. Their capital is Halifax. It's a beautiful, very, very modern city. The Bay of Fundy is, a, is along the side of Nova Scotia. And here you can see how low the tide is when the tide is out. Ontario, it's larger than France. It's larger than Spain, which means it's larger than the U Yukon. And it's Canada's most populated province. There's a large nickel mine there, just across the border from, on, from the United States into Ontario, is Sudbury. And it has, it has designed this huge, the world's largest nickel. Agriculture is very important. I took that picture from a bus. Clearly, the bus wasn't going too fast, or you wouldn't have been able to see the picture very well. But a lot, of, a lot of planning goes on there. It also has the lakes, one-fifth of the world's fresh water. And it has Niagara Falls, which it shares with the United States. This is a picture I took this past fall of Niagara Falls. And then I got myself on a boat and put on some rain gear and went down and got this picture. It's a very powerful fall. So if you haven't seen it, it's really worth the trip. It's a wonderful place to go and visit. Ontario has the capital, which is Toronto. It has restaurants. That tall tower that you're looking at has a restaurant where it bulges out. I had lunch up there. The elevator's very quick, and it's not scary at all. It's kind of disappointing. I thought it would be kind of exciting. You just get on and you're right up there also has Ottawa, which is Canada's capital. Now, this capital 
has this wonderful river, canal rather, and skating rink. A Frenchman named Radeau um, built this eight mile long barrier so that the city of Ottawa would be safe if it was attacked by anybody. And in the winter time, people, it's, it's, it freezes so smooth that people ice skate, they're ice skating back and forth to work. They just leave their cars at home. You've heard of the Canadian Mounties. They are trained in Alberta, but their horses are trained in Ontario. And I visited the stalls and the, the horses and everything uh, in September. Um, it's very clean, very beautiful, a very, very, very interesting place to visit. I didn't, I didn't think I would enjoy it much, and I surprised myself. It was really fun. Okay, we are almost, we have a couple of minutes, and we're almost to the end of this. Can you imagine you've traveled so fast so far? Any, or fa far so fast. This is Quebec, second largest. See none of it? None of it is the hugest territory. Quebec is the largest province. It has three major areas. It has the tundra. It has the Arctic area and it has agriculture at the bottom. So it has the most variety of all of the provinces. And there's so much forest in Quebec that if you take Norway and Sweden together, that's how much forest land is in Quebec. So it is really, really very heavily forested in the, in the middle part. Most of the people speak French there. And here's your flag. I told you, you have to believe me. When I tell you something, I mean it. And here we are. There's the flag, National Canadian Flag Day. There's the flag, and guess why? Guess what's in the middle of maple leaf? Why? Because maple syrup is very important there. And the other industry that's also very important to them is the dairy industry. Recently, we had trouble between the United States and Canada about uh, the cost of cheese and dairy products and things, we finally settled it. it. There's not going to be a war over it. Everybody will be fine. But we came to terms because they also export a lot of dairy products. Montreal is in Quebec. It sits on an island 30 miles long. And a curious thing about Montreal is that in this, there are three mountains in the center of the city. On the tallest mountain, they built this cross, and they made a rule. No building, no building in the city can be taller than that cross. It has to be the highest thing in the city, always. And if you're interested in ice skating or hockey, <coughs> that's where the first hockey match was. The first indoor hockey match was in Montreal. Quebec City is a magical city. Um, when you're there, I almost feel like I'm in Paris. It has two parts. The upper city was built to protect the lower city because the lower city was the original settlement. Now, if you notice on this, in the background, wait till I back this up. Here we go. In the background, you can see a funicular. See this going up? It's how you get from the upper city to the lower city the quickest way. At the top of the upper city is the Hotel Frontenac. The Frontenac Hotel is the most photographed hotel in the world. It's very important. Important people have stayed there. They have had meetings there. Um, but it's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful, magical city to visit. Okay, very quickly, look at this. This is what's happened to you in the last 45 minutes of your life. Take a look. There's none of it. The highest, the highest place on the earth where there are people. Here at the Northwest, Northwest Territory, diamond mines. The largest weather vane. The oldest tree. The longest, most beautiful trail along the ocean. The polar bear capital, the big moose, the Canadian flag, 
French fries. Every French fry you eat, every French fry is from there. That's where they come from. And guess what? Before I started this program, I went to my grocery store at home to see if it was true, if they sold these French fries made by McCain's, and they did. So I bought two different types. I bought the curly ones, I bought the straight ones, and I still have to get the ones that are kind of woven. They call them waffle fries, okay? I'm telling they're perfect. They're wonderful. They're easy to make. But they have the contract. No matter where you eat French fries, Beijing, New York City, Moscow, if you are in a McDonald's restaurant, that's where your French fries came from. And let's see what happens today at lunch. Let's see if you get their favorite dish, which is macaroni and cheese. <clears throat> so that, ladies and gentlemen, is your quickest tour ever in the world of all of Canada. I've enjoyed speaking with you. I'll be back to talk about other subjects later on while I'm here. But thank you very much for your attention.